And hello guys, welcome back to <coughs> our video on turbulence modeling. So in the last video, we are talking about the two equations, namely the k and epsilon transport uh, equations, where k is the uh, turbulent kinetic energy. And as we saw in our last video, uh, this was a kinetic energy, turbulent kinetic energy that's made up of the fluctuating components of the x, y, and z velocity, and it's a, in a per unit mass kind of a thing. And some this epsilon is some uh, dissipation of that turbulent kinetic energy or dissipation of energy in general, and that uh, that helps to you know uh, it's in a units of a specific power or power per unit mass something like that, uh, and it's a measure of how fast these turbulent flows actually dissipate their energy. So we talked about this last video. We talked about the the advection terms and the change within this uh, volume. These are the advection terms, where there's convection, there's a bulk transport of uh, K in that sense, and these are the diffusion terms, as you can see. And then there's a production and a destruction term. So similar, f similarly for epsilon, there's also the time derivative plus the advection, there's diffusion, and then there's the production and destruction. Of course, uh, you know, normalize it using some constants, but it's pretty much the same idea. So what are P and D? Well, um, if you look at the uh, textbook on the computational fluid dynamics um, by this guy Tu, Yu, and uh, Liu, I think, um, this will be a... Uh, this is the equation that's given. Now notice here that they don't have the over bars, but what they mean is that you know they uh, they have you know truncated their notation so that it actually means uh, um, it's an average quantity. So it's an average x y x y and z. So just to be clear, I'll type this out. So p equals p equals two into the kinematic viscosity. So I'm just going to write it as such. Partial u bar partial x squared. Of course, you can fast forward uh, fast forward this on your own if you already know what I'm talking about. So partial v bar partial y squared plus partial w bar partial z whole thing squared. Close this up. Okay. So plus new t. So there's a turbulent kinematic viscosity, and we'll have this pair of terms. Partial u bar partial y plus partial v bar partial x squared. So the next term will be here. V bar partial Z partial W bar Y partial Y squared plus And that's it. So basically, I've just copied and pasted this entire equation here. So, and the dissipation term in our case is um, epsilon, basically. So epsilon is the dissipation of the kinetic energy, the rate of dissipation. So that's why d equals to epsilon. So that's a very uh, simple thing for us. Now, of course, uh, no, the derivation of this, I'm not going to go into it. That's another topic on its own. You just take it that, you know, the the production rate of you know turbulent kinetic energy is as such. It's related to the stresses, which are pretty normal. It's related to the velocity gradients of x, y, and z. Um, yeah, the normal stresses and the, the shear stresses. These things will cause sort of a increase in the turbulent the kinetic energy. Uh, that's that, that's just talking about it in an intuitive uh, sense. Okay, now 
you might also see online these expressions. Okay, now these are of course with uh, varying density. That's why you see the row over here. You see the row, and the row k and u i and x i. Then you'll see something like this: uh, partial partial x j is mu t over sigma. Then partial k partial x j. Then what are these i j and k's over here talking about? So you will notice that um, in the full expression, if you write everything out. Uh, it will look way more complicated but if you short you want to do it in shorthand it will be written like this and now um, something like this this eij for example you might not know what it means uh, it, it means uh, component rate of deformation or strain so strain if you talk about material science you learned material science before or solids mechanics you know that strain is you know when uh, a material deforms due to some stresses or forces that are being applied to it so these are talking about the strains. Now what are all these uh, I and J? Now these these are all called... Uh, yeah, this is what I explained earlier. This one I'm highlighting I explained earlier. So this is what the strain looks like. Again, some people use S, some people use E. Uh, but basically it just means the same thing. Uh, some rate of strain. And then EIJ is basically written like this. Half into... Del x, uh, del u i, del x j plus del u j, del x i, and then it's like, oh, okay, what what it what is this supposed to mean even? Okay, so these these things are um, written in Einstein lo Einstein lo notation. It's basically a summation notation that you will find common in tensor algebra. Now tensors themselves, they are a whole different topic on their own. Um, so. If you want to study more on turbulence, uh, go really in depth. Uh, you might want to do a little work on tensors, but uh, for our for our case, we're just you know scratching the surface. We just want to get an intuition on what's going on behind all this turbulence modeling. You don't have to go that deep into tensors. Just know enough to get an understanding of the equations. You don't need to know the math. You don't need to know about vectors or uh, I mean the mathematical pure definition of vectors. If you study that vectors and tensors in this vector space, talk about vector spaces and everything, you might get very confused and the math is so complicated that it's used for general relativity. But in this case, we don't really need to talk about this, so don't worry too much about that. I'll just introduce you to Einstein notation. So if we have uh, something like this, Sij. Sij will basically mean you sum over the three dimensions because uh, there are three dimensions, right? X, Y, and Z. So you sum over I from 1 to 3 and you sum over J from 1 to 3. So, yeah, it's something like that. Maybe the order can be reversed. Um, I gotta go and double check, but this is basically what it means. So, for example, you have something like this, right? You have something like this. What does it mean? It means basically this, and you try and sum it. You try and sum it over uh, i equals 1 and j equals 1. From j equals 1 to 3, from i equals 1 to 3. So let's just practice writing this out, and then we can call it a day. Okay? So, and of course, in, inside the equation, you will see this eij eij, meaning to say they are multiplied together. And that's how you'll get this whole expression here. But for now, let's just write this out first. So let's sum from j equals 1 to 3. Alright, so I'm taking the half out. And I'll leave it from summing from i equals 1 to 3. Okay, never mind, I'll just write the new one. So I'll backward slash sum from i equals 1. So there's a subscript, and then you have a superscript of 3, then you'll just do this. Okay, so... So where's J? So we'll write the partial U I partial X1 plus partial U1 partial X I 
So it's just practicing writing out all of these. So that's the first term. Alright, that's the first term. Now let's put the second term in. So I'm just going to put this and I'm just going to replace all the ones by twos. Okay, and it's faster this way. And I'm going to paste again. Instead of twos, now you put three. You can imagine this is going to stretch out pretty long. Okay, so I'm just going to replace all this by three. Okay, and of course u1 is a velocity in the x direction, x1 is just x direction, x2 is y direction, x3 is z direction. So if we were to, you know, write this out, and the entire thing out, then it'll look something like this, half, I'll just put an equal sign here to indicate we are continuing from the last equation. So I'm just going to bracket first, and then I'll have this. This entire thing in here, I'll paste it three times. One, two, three. Okay, so first, the first one we'll just say i equals to one, because this is a summation. This one it says i equals to one. So we'll just put replace all the i's here with one. And here we'll replace all the i's with two. <coughs> and in the last one we'll replace all the i's with three. Okay, so that's how it's supposed to look like. And of course, uh, if you want to replace it with uh, more familiar terms, x, y, and z, then we'll do it the following way. So this is u bar. This is x. This is also u bar, because it appears twice. This is also x. This is u bar, then this is y, and this is y bar, and this is x. Oh, that's not y bar, that is w bar. So now you can see the pattern starting to emerge. u bar, starting to get laggy. Okay, I'll just fast forward this. Oh, before I do that, I uh, just need to know that this is V, not U, or not W. So, yeah, do know that correction. I'm just going to replace it all, similar to what I'm doing here. Uh, so now I've just replaced everything. Hopefully there are no careless mistakes. Uh, yeah, if there are, of course, just feel free to leave in the comments and correct me. <coughs> okay, so, um, good. Um, Basically, we see this so-called, you know, del u, del y, del v, del x. And similar thing for the z direction. And we repeat it for every every part. So v and y here, x and u are here. All seem to check out really nicely. Okay, so we notice that these are duplicate terms. We can just use 2 in front of them. So I'm going to leave it as 2 here. Two here and two here. So now you notice the term starting to look familiar. To so let's say something like this. You notice why there are so many squares here? It's because uh, we have these two 
This thing is squared. This whole thing is squared. Right? You see? EIJ, EIJ. And then you square everything and you condense everything together. You should eventually get something like this. Alright? So this is just to give you an intuition into uh, what this P and D are talking about. Um, why why they are written as such. And of course, uh, just an intro to some of the notation you might see online so that you won't get so confused. So remember, this is Einstein notation. It works something like this. And when you expand it out, it's exactly the same as what... Oopsie. It's exactly the same as what you would uh, get uh, when you write it out normally. So don't be afraid of the Einstein notation. Just take note. Um, yeah, so in future, we... Yeah, we'll know what to expect, right? So again, this Einstein notation, it applies to this also. You see this advection term? Now xi and ui. So this advection term, if we expand it out, it's a u, v, and w. And remember, these are all averaged. I just didn't write it out here. There's supposed to be an overbar on top of them. All right, so that, again, I say that it's supposed to be an overbar on top of them. So uh, yeah, these are all averaged quantities. And yeah. And you're supposed to sum them up from 1 to 3. That's why you have three terms here. And then you have one term here, which is a summation term, to represent all the three terms. Same thing for the uh, diffusion, diffusion term. So that's basically Einstein notation and the K and Epsilon equations. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.